All right, let's do it. In five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's. The Chick Angel. Welcome to another podcast. Episode smash that like button. Smash that notification button. Baby, 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 baby. I'm going 2022. Baby, baby, baby. Jazzy. Church announcements. It is my birthday Sunday. I'm going to be 39. If you feel so inclined to bless me, I talked about it on the bonus episode. I'm going to tell y'all too. buy a ticket to keep your distance comedy. Okay. The link is in the bios, Kev on stages, all those things. And listen, you can use the promo code Kev for a discount, but don't this time. <laughs> Wait. Do not just, just get it full. But please, I've been, you know, uh, uh, I've been I've, I've I've decided to help the people of the world, mm-hmm. actors and actresses who aren't SAG. And long story short, it is actually more expensive to do that. Sing and I up. found that. So if you believe in my belief of helping people who deserve opportunities, buy a ticket to keep your distance. If you don't want to do that, just go, I, there's a tip me thing in my Instagram. Tip, tip, hub. Hub. tip hub me uh-huh. cash app Venmo pay ma- PayPal. You could just bless me direct. Bless Kay. Kev like he a stripper. Come Throw on. some dollars. <laughs> if you put $3 on it, you helped. You put 5 10 whatever you have. You know I don't ask for much, rarely ask for anything ever, but listen, it's a lot. We only shot up two episodes, and it's it's a lot of money. So uh, great show, and tell y'all again, black women comedians, people did not pull up for them last time. I was just sharing the truth, mm-hmm. which I always do. But I'm going to continue to book to a show because it's important to me. Amen. If it ain't Amen. important to anybody else, it's important to it's me. It's important to Kevin. It's important to me. But I got to go out my way to find them. And I got to fly them. You understand me? And yeah. I got to house them. And, and I got to them drive them. T- and you paid them on time. And I pay them before the show now. So, so KevOnStage.com, promo code Kev for a discount or just buy it. How are we doing uh, the, uh, straight I'm up. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm you so go ahead, sorry. How are we doing the... Uh, Is there a pre-roll? I don't even know. We'll just do them later. Oh, okay, that's what we'll I was hoping. Later. Weird. Uh, okay. All right. First things first, okay. I pop up. Okay. Uh, Mike Tyson, uh, a person was sitting behind him on an airplane. Yes, he right. was. And the way the story goes, and this is from passengers who were also in first class, the guy was excited that he saw Mike Tyson on the plane. He asked him for a picture. Mike Tyson obliged. Uh, then the guy proceeded to continue to bother him. He looked like he was a little inebriated. Oh, and he, he looked very inebriated. He bothered him and bothered him and bothered him. Uh, the next thing <laughs> you see is, and you got to look it up because I don't want the video to get this video to get taken down mm-hmm. for posting fight videos. Mike Tyson going heavy bag on this dude, right? Mm-hmm. And the, I, I ain't gonna hold you. The dude's face afterward. Oh my like, God. He had a bloody, like, red He had his cuts head. all across his side of his head. It was like, because it, it, it was the first class seats that kind of cover, like, that kind of enclosed you. So it was like Mike Tyson was punching down into a barrel that he was in. Oh no. So it's like, he ain't going to miss. He's going to every, he every single punch is going to connect. He literally every does going. it professionally for a living is punch people. Yes. And now you're in a space where you can't move. You're going to get hit. And so who's going to stop him? <laughs> was, was you, if Mike Tyson is punching you and I'm there, you're getting punched by Mike Tyson. I'm not even going to tell him no. I don't want any of that anger directed towards me. Oh, you want to, you want me to draw his attention away? Uh uh-uh, uh, that's Mm-mm. like a bull. Nope. That's literally, you're already getting punched. Yeah, uh uh-uh. uh. We you don't need punched. to share the wealth. Uh, you I'm finding my today. seat, stepping out of the aisle so people can find their seats to not hold up the boarding process. They any were longer. flying. Both the plane and the punches. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Today. The funniest thing about that dude getting beat up by Mike Tyson is you just got to sit down for the rest of the flight with your head throbbing now. Yeah. Like, that's just... Yeah. Yeah. The head hurting, blood bleeding. I, I really want to know the race of the person filming. Mm. Yeah, I think it was a dude's boy. But yeah, but was it the dude's boy? The, because the guy who got punched was white. The dude mm. who was recording better have been black. <laughs> Why? Because did you not hear some of the stuff he said on the day? Uh, I never listened to he it with sound on. They never, they never should have given you niggas money. Oh, I didn't hear it. Uh, yeah, and I, said, I didn't never listen to it with sound on. I said, huh? 
you. You now Mike Tyson gotta beat you up if you yeah, ain't. If well you then ain't. that might be why the dude got punched. She was like, I can't get over to your friend because he's across <laughs> two hours. But I can get over to you. I can turn around and start busting you upside your Actually, head. That's I, the thing that's crazy of like if you are a fan of Mike Tyson, you know what he is famous for. He bit off a nigga's ear <laughs> for doing his job. For less. For less. For doing yes, for doing his job. And, and and if you know what he's famous for, why would you do something to agitate him when you've seen, if you just saw what he did in The Hangover and nothing else? I don't even, not even agitate. I don't want to engage with Mike Tyson in any form. It's like... Uh, being uh, not that I don't want to compare him to an animal as if he is not a human being, yeah. but it's still like tigers look great. Lions look beautiful. Sometimes they lick their paws. Sometimes they're very nice, but I know they're capable of ripping me apart. <laughs> yeah. So I am not going to be like, hi tiger. Right. I'm not going, I don't want to engage him. I don't want to make eye contact. <laughs> None of that because I know the possibilities even, are endless. <laughs> listen, that's a fantastic analogy because I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I watch cl clips of Mike Tyson talking go viral all the time. Even when he is whispering, he is intimidating. He did this one thing. He has like a podcast where he smokes a lot. They always show his clips in black and white. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to fight that man. I'm scared of that man because that man, I can't control him. And if I get out, like, I can never get him back in. I'd be like. This nigga crazy. Yes. Yes. This man is crazy. He is afraid. Of Mike Tyson is afraid, is of, Mike afraid Tyson. of Mike Tyson. As he should be. You think I want to bother the man who doesn't trust himself? If he loses, if he don't know what he's capable of doing of his own well-being. You think I want to, I want to agitate that man? I, I don't want to be on the flight. We supposed to be going to Singapore. Take me uh, to Arkansas. Get me off of this plane. Drop me off here. Actually, the door? I'm going to just, me I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just open it up. Get, get me up off of here. Arkansas going the other direction. Put put it down. <laughs> take, you can take my luggage. I don't care. Get me, put me off of the plane. Right Land now. this plane in Little Rock. Uh -huh. Right now. Yeah, there is nothing. I, I honestly don't understand. When I was watching the video, I was like, why is he... It's almost like he was baiting him, like to yeah. be able to have that as a story. I got punched by Mike Tyson. That is never, that's not, there's a lot of stories I don't want to be able to tell my grandkids. That's right. one of them. And that's, now that's on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even throw a punch back. For what? He didn't even really cover up. Th that would be this, <laughs> doing that. <laughs> a Funko Pop. That's what he was like. A Funko Pop, if he would have tried to box with Mike. Yeah. That's what it, <laughs> And Mike Tyson, what, 50 plus now? I don't know how old he his, is. I, again, his videos go viral now. I think Mike, viral. <laughs> viral now. Mike Tyson probably 54. Let me check. Wow. Uh, mm -mm. I'm just guessing, though. Mm, I can't. He still looks. 55. Strong. 55. Mm. He still looks strong in his training videos. He still is fast. He is still strong. He, he is. is still fast. It's not just a look. It is a fact. It is a fact. Him is strong. Him Listen. is fast. Eric Wilson said that man going to be killing in two, two truths and a lie. <laughs> I got beat up by Mike Tyson on the airplane. Well, that's obviously not true. Wait, <laughs> this is me. Absolutely. Well, he going to have to match it. I, I jumped out of a plane. I got beat up by Mike Tyson on a plane. Like, he's going to have to make sure all those things match up. You know if somebody gets hit hard or, or hits hard if you draw blood off of knuckles? Yes. From this part of your head. Like, there's this part of your head is where he was bleeding. The forehead adjacent head okay. meat. I your nose bleeding, I get. You got to punch hard for This is head meat, skin, skull. I he punched th this his hurts. face was literally sad was, like i'm in trouble he looked like the emoji that's going i don't even like when my weaves are too tight like that's how like if my braids are weaves are too i'm like take it off <laughs> he has on a permanent too tight weave he can't do nothing that's what his head is feeling like like <laughs> that wig they should have measured his for a little more 
diameter because that's how his head is gonna feel tight and the dude recording was like hey mike hey <laughs> hey that's the part that you if you would have listened to it on sound when mike started to dig into that dude's head he was like hey hey mike hey because <laughs> what you you know you ain't about to raise your oh, voice come on man he's already punching I don't want nothing to draw. That's like jumping into a bull is mauling somebody. You're like, kill me also while you're, while you're in the mood. Oh, can I tell y'all a story that's adjacent? It's not famous people, but it does fit what we're talking about. Do Please. you mind? Of course. So a uh, close friend of mine called me. I'm not going to give too many details of who the person is, just in case this was not a story that was supposed to get out. A teacher had said to a student that I guess was acting up. Sit down, or I'm a. I think maybe I'm gonna beat your ass. Right? This is what he said to the student. Okay. So the student called their parent and was like, "Let me tell you what the teacher said." Mm -hmm. The student's father shows up to the school to have a conversation with the teacher, like a parent-teacher conference, and he's asking the teacher, "Okay, so what gave you the inclination that this was appropriate to say to my child?" So the teacher's trying to explain. He keeps asking. The teacher's not giving a response that is suitable for the parent. The parent reaches over the table and begins to beat the teacher up. Oh, These no. These are black people, black man, black man, right? Because he was like, what you're not going to do is ever tell my son that you're going to do anything physical to him. I don't care how bad my child is. The student then jumps in with the dad. <laughs> they are both fighting. Oh, this is at a parent-teacher conference? Yes, this is after the student was like, Daddy, the teacher said. Now they jump in the teacher? They jump in the teacher. The security guard jumps in to try to pull the student off of the, the, uh, in the jump in. Boom, 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 boom. Kid bucking, 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 bucking. <laughs> Kid is bucking, bucking, bucking so much that the security guard's head keeps hitting the wall. Security guard passes out. Oh, no. What? <laughs> Dead serious. Passes out from the head, book. Cause yeah, from all the all the like that that the students doing to try to get away to help his daddy oh beat up the my teacher. Gosh. This is what's happening in the world. Listen, let me tell you what. Also, this just remind me. I, I that that's a job I could never do because I don't care about other people as much as I care about me. Mm -hmm. I am to secure and deter. <laughs> I I did not sign up. To be a security guard to get beat up by parents and children. Yeah, y'all gonna have to let me go. Why don't you help? Cause I don't, I don't fight. Good. I don't fight. I'm I just don't. large and intimidating. I don't, I don't punch. Uh -huh. Not and went not not got a knock. Got unconscious. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, Come on, hit you. <laughs> Come on, speak it, speak it. Sound like I done got knocked unconscious at work. Yeah, yeah. From a student. I just, I said. Now listen, I there were so many things that went wrong. First of all, can't no teacher ever say something that crazy to my child. And Would you I beat know, the teacher up? There is a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> there is a possibility. Like, can't nobody say something off brand. Amar might be the one to, to make a teacher want to say something like yeah. that. Yeah. But you just, it, you, this is not, this is the wrong child well, to say you, it to. You made two mistakes. <laughs> you said something crazy, now you got beat up at work. Two you can think mistakes. this. You can text this in a group chat. Absolutely. You can't tell the child. You can't. Not of a black parent. That's what I'm saying. And I think, you know, I, I feel for teachers because kids be making you want to say it. Because mm. some kids be tested that thing where you just like, I'm going to fight you. That's why I played dodgeball. <laughs> you like, that's how I'm going to get these kids. I'm not getting them at all. <laughs> dodgeball is a great game. physical dodgeball. activity. The kids loved when the teachers played. Sometimes they the ball hit their leg, they tripped and fell. Mm. Sometimes a child didn't see him and they threw a ball. Pink, that's all that happened. It's so much easier to tell your chi uh, uh, parent, how my kid get hurt? Dodgeball. Dodgeball, you know. You it's know the a ball tough hit game. tough. <laughs> one of the balls bounced back and hit your kid in the face. Oh wow, that's crazy. Uh. I just... I'm not even lying. Right. You're like... I didn't I, say who threw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's Mr. Kevin. And dodgeball... No. Oh, God. It's so no. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and dodgeball's a game that parents like to play and remember playing. Mm -hmm. And they... Oh, well, you, you know, things happen. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. Why my kid always getting hurt? I don't All the kids no get idea. hurt. All of them. You know, <laughs> it's a phase where they're just really trying to learn their bodies. So, you know, they're not able to catch it. Catch it. But yeah, uh, the, the, the parent, they're going to press charges against... The, the parent, well, the parent actually started 
a physical altercation. What, I mean, listen, yeah. it's, I, <laughs> if you pressed hands against my flesh, my only recourse is to press charger. <laughs> but, right? It ain't going to take it back that you got beat up. <laughs> right. And you know, hey, sometimes and I feel like you would be okay with charges being pressed. Yeah. <laughs> what do you I mean? mean like, yeah. Absolutely, that's a reasonable response. Well, let's I get all it. Be re- let's all I get be it. I get it. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I I'll mean. be in court. Yeah, I, I'm gonna take orders. If for, and you got no priors, it's gonna be a, a fine. Yeah, and I mean, you know. A little fine, a little community service. Oh, I get it. If I got washed, I'd do the same. You yeah. know? It's, it is who just, are we to not press charges? <laughs> who are we? I'm not going to go ahead. Just go ahead and press them. This is what you're going to say. That's what you say ahead before the fight. Go ahead and press them charges, ma'am. <laughs> what? <That's, laughs> you tell yeah. them to press charges ahead of time? Yeah. Listen. <laughs> It's Angel Tanksley. Here's my address. Why? 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 Because you're about to press charges. <laughs> you're about to press, you, press you the gonna, charges. When, when I get finished with what I'm about to do, you're going to be pressing charges. I want to make this easier for you. I'm not even going to hide. I'll be at court. I'll be up at that court. I'll pay my fine, my fee. I'll do my time. I'm going to knock you out, though. <laughs> That's how you know how, how, what the type of temperament the student had that the <laughs> student jumped into the fight. My kids would have been like, Daddy, no! Or mommy, no! The student's like, get in that! Like, <laughs> how old was the kid? This is high school. Oh, you ain't Could you either. imagine I, Zay Zay jumping in? I would be so proud. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I would be so proud if he jumped in and we was beating his teacher up. I, son, <laughs> you want an Oculus? <laughs> Let's go down to GameStop. Before they put me in jail. Before let's they go put to me game. in jail. You let's remember when I because I had hit him in the in the side. You came over the top. Blah, blah. Especially Zay Zay, who was a diplomatic child. If he jumped in on the I would be so proud I'd buy him a car. <laughs> you jumped in to help me. Zay Zay, this is just a wonderful moment. <laughs> a I'm so glad we were I able imagine to Imagine looking at my son like, nice son. Now hit him with go, let's go for a body shot. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Boo! Turn with you, you got to turn your hip with your body. Just, your uh, power comes from your base, uh, <laughs> son. Wait, remember, you knocked the security guard out. Oh, this is you got great! Him, you got him with the Mike Tyson. No. Oh no! You knocked the security guard out. I just, <sighs> I, I, oh, so many I things. I do, I do feel class. bad for the teacher. I do, but that, that is, you know, you live and you learn. You can't say that. I bet you, no kids. child ever. We'll be told that again. Ever. They might not even teach no more. <laughs> I doubt it. Oh, what? <laughs> I doubt it. But no, that's the reason why I thought I was going to fight this little child in, when I was subbing. And that's when I realized I couldn't sub no more. The uh, child had the nerve to do one of those things, Andy. Oh! oh they'd they be dead. Oh, in the black community. I was like. They he, flinched at it you? It was a little white baby. Little white child. He, mm, and I said, I want to remind everyone. <laughs> That Miss Moore, this is a job to her, not an occupation. Listen, Amen. and I will lose this job <laughs> today. So everybody, stay in your seats. And I, I knew my first inclination was just get your purse and leave. Leave these kids in here by themselves. It's fine. But what if you grab your purse and in turning around, see the kid? I didn't even see that. I just, I didn't even know they were behind me. <laughs> they would have known. They were like, no, she made eye contact. <laughs> As she swiped across his face repeatedly, repeatedly with her purse. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm -mm -mm. Guys, we're going to take a quick break from the show to talk about something. Do you ever feel like you're just 10 steps behind the bigger guy when it comes to your small business? Like you just don't have all the, the cheat codes that everybody else does, you know, to to really make things more efficient. You know, sometimes it just doesn't feel fair. If you run an e-commerce business, you probably feel like it's about time people stop treating e-commerce giants bigger just because... They are bigger, and you're absolutely right. That's why ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers of all sizes access to the same deeply discounted rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. No wonder ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. Terrified of dealing with international shipping? Don't be. ShipStation makes it a breeze to ship anywhere around the world. So scale away. ShipStation can handle it. Guys, I don't know about you, but when it comes to saving money, I love it. Especially when it comes to shipping rates and all that stuff. When I was getting the fake deep mugs out, it really cost a lot of money per mug that I had no idea that I had to pay out of my own pocket. So every dollar counted. And now what I'm able to do with that money is reinvest it into new logo ideas, new colorway ideas, um, 
hoodies, anything that I'm thinking about, I can kind of just, I know in the back of my head that I've saved a couple dollars that I could throw into that instead of that on top of the overly expensive shipping rates that uh, comes with trying to get this stuff out to everybody. So guys, ShipStation's a no brainer for me. ShipStation doesn't just save you money, but it's a good place to start. You get deeply discounted shipping rates normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies. ShipStation works with over 45 carriers. Easily compare rates and delivery times to quickly find the best option every time. It works with over 300 platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more to automate processes like fulfillment and tracking. So you can save time managing orders. Who doesn't love saving time? Because I do. In fact, 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in their business. So that's what we need you guys to do. Don't let the big guys keep all the good discounts to themselves. Say, hey, don't do that. Sign up using promo code CREW with a K for a free 60 day trial today at shipstation.com and start saving with every shipment. That's two whole months of discounted shipping, absolutely free. Just go to shipstation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in CREW with a K, that's K-R-E-W, ShipStation, make ship happen. So okay. in other news, uh, DJ Envy and his wife uh, promoting their new book or her new book, I couldn't tell. This went viral last week. Uh, she talked about faking it in the bedroom. Let's hear it from her mouth. <sighs> Let me pull it up here. All right. A person that you women can relate, like you want to reward that man for that work. And the only reward that you have to offer is an orgasm. But yeah. even if I didn't feel it, I would still be performative. So yes, I was faking it. We got into like an argument and then she was like, well, you know, I don't be having an orgasm. She was saying that she speaks way more eloquent than I would have. And I was like, what? And she was like, I don't. I'm like, no, yes, you do. I hear it. Like, ah, ah, ah. And then she was like, no, I'm faking it. I'm like, every time? And she was like, yeah. And then that just crushed me because I thought I was putting in work. Like I'm, I'm sitting there thinking I'm, you know, big daddy long leg. Oh no. <sighs> Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm, you know, I'm so glad that they eventually had the conversation. <laughs> Cause he's just out here living a lie. I mean, he just. just <sighs> you loved it, huh? You loved it. Getting this work. But women do be lying. <laughs> All the time. This if the love hour didn't teach me nothing else, I found out <laughs> that women be lying. The male ego is so fragile. Oh, man. Uh-huh. We can't. Her, her gift to him was, let me just stroke your ego. Because your stroke's not doing anything for me. <laughs> oh, so wow. let me just make you... It made me feel good. And it's like, to be honest, I don't I don't even know what's worse. Would you be rather be told the truth or be lied to? I love lies. <laughs> you like they look so amazing. Never they tell never tell me the truth. Oh no. Lie to me? Oh no. Yes. Mm -mm. I, you ain't never had an orgasm? That's fine. <laughs> if I'm I go to my whole life not knowing. Yes. Uh -uh. Yes. <laughs> I, my ego is nothing. My, my ego is built upon wet paper towels. <laughs> I can't take the truth all the time. Oh, no. You know, and listen, I when I watched that, I didn't really laugh. I was just like, is this me? <laughs> you know, I thought it was, you know what? I, I know a lot of people were just like, ah, I can't take that as a man. I just... I I appreciate honesty and and I also have a hard time biting my tongue. So But you're a great actress. Yeah. No, you're gonna feel great in the moment regardless, but we're gonna talk afterwards. Hey. That's what Hey, <laughs> hey bro. <laughs> Let me tell like, you. Like if you ask if, if the question is being asked, the truth is going to be told. Ah. And luckily I am with a spouse that wants the truth. So it's yeah. great. It's a great, it's, I, the thing is, is that everybody's better when the truth is out there. Everybody. I don't know if DJ better. Envy's better. He was hurt. He was crushed. He said. Yeah. But I bet you he now is, if he really wants to be daddy long stroke is now doing the things that would actually garner him that name. Well, that's the thing about the, the lesson I learned in marriage. Uh, uh, I, I'm so grateful for the love hour. Mm -hmm. And the Marriage Be Hard book coming out September 13th. 
uh, we are taught as men, P and V G, just straight, just, yeah, just putting it in, in. just, ooh, just <laughs> getting in there, and and just doing this is great, right? And I ask the questions. I'm grateful. I don't, Melissa, bless God, she don't be lying like that, and I can take the truth. Uh-huh. But I was like, so what do you feel? She was like, pressure, mostly. I was like, mm. like if you ain't going to the place where the uh, receptors are, mm-hmm. then you're just you're just in. <laughs> Love just, feels great. You know what I mean? There's uh-huh. there's there's somebody you got to say hi to. No, uh-huh. you know, right above. <laughs> he said he's in there. Right above, right. you got to say hello in some way. Mm-hmm. You got to say it's like men. Here's the thing you got to understand. What they got to understand, Kevin? The helmet is where all the sensors are great for us. That's why we can get off almost all the time. Because yeah. in order to get inside, the helmet is doing great. Yeah. Let's Imagine. Get all the yeah. Now imagine if 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 your 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 penis is this, right? And you say your balls is here. <laughs> yes. Right? It's just an odd looking penis, but say it's there. Imagine if your girl's just getting this much of the shaft. It was just like <laughs> Would that just be terrible for you? You'd be like, what are you doing? You yeah, like it, this, don't you? This you part like of the shaft. And like it was it, like, you? yeah. Yeah. I'm shafting you. <laughs> and you could do that for two hours. Nothing is going to happen. Mm-hmm. That's what most men are doing when they don't say hello <laughs> to the clitoris. Say You're just hello. shafting it. Say hello. And you, I don't really feel nothing. Like, you know, it's a penis, but they, the reception ain't there. Okay? And that's what we do. We just don't have no, we just, we don't know. Mm-hmm. And if you don't tell nobody, then they don't know. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I was, I'm a student of everything I do. <laughs> You're like, so teach I, me. Teach me the way, teach me how you want to be loved. Mm-hmm. You got to check in and you, most of the time you should check in in the moment as well or after, before. Hey, what that feel like? Um, and I remember when I was young and dumb, I talked about this on the love hour. I remember thinking that uh, if I can't get you wet by myself, then I'm, you know, a bad partner. Well, that's just dumb. Listen, there was a Love Hour episode we where I don't remember who the person was, but they're like, listen, the older you get, post kids, come on. If you're not using lube, you're you're. It's probably just painful. It is. It, <laughs> listen, I, if there ain't something, you better bring something extra to the party. <laughs> something. Some extra. Tw- uh, listen, 20s is gone. <laughs> 20s is gone. It's gone. Gone, gone. Bring some extra to the party. Listen. To the party. <laughs> yes. I, and I, it was freeing to know that it ain't had nothing to do with oh, your four plays. Not, listen, w- listen, we getting up there. You can have all the right intentions. Sometimes you need a little assistance. I like the party now. You're going to a cookout? B-Y-O-B. Come on. <laughs> B-Y-O-L. Yes. Bring your own loop. Bring your own loop. That's yes. the name of one. Yeah. Good, Bring dude. a little loop to the party. Yeah. Loop makes everything fun, easier. Just a touch it, of love a little bit. Let, bro, get, get, put a lot on there. <laughs> Loop's not that expensive. What's Go so, crazy. What's so crazy is how much sex is tied to a dude's ego, where it's oh, not man. as tied to women. It's not that a woman wants to hear that, like, her walls don't exist or something like that. <laughs> it's not like we're like, right. it doesn't matter if you say that. I'm fine with it. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Whatever. But for dudes, it is so connected <laughs> to their ego that it dem- sometimes doesn't foster honest conversation for sure and because of the female mechanism there are quite a few ways to get a woman off but like every it's like a um a way to get into a safe and the code be different like so you might have figured out somebody's code back in the day of being able to like figure out the combination you you get over here with this chick and it's a completely different that's set the of code st- for that box right this box ain't open you don't Matter even fact, realize this box don't even have that box had a key this one is a fingerprint exactly you over there using the key, the code for a different type of box you're not in the box at that's all what, listen that's why i'm so grateful for the love hour because i gotta tell people i'm only good at sex with one person I only know what Melissa likes. <laughs> you like that is. And it. honestly, to be cra- let me tell you what's crazy. What she likes ain't even gonna be the same every time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's why you got to be talking. Absolutely. And if and uh, listen, feedback is what makes it great. Yeah. So for DJ Envy's uh, wife, I believe her name is Gia, Gia Casey, I believe. Mm-hmm. Her own sexual experience is hindered by the. 
lie. Yeah. Because she allowed or because she, you know, was, and I'm not, you know, she did it for her own reasons. Mm -hmm. He went out and made the money. She was like, let me stroke your ego. Uh, but if you don't, I mean, it's a hard conversation. I imagine, you know, Hey, I didn't do it. It did not work for me. I don't <laughs> like it. Even if she didn't perform it, if she just didn't do nothing, then he's going, Hey, what's going on? Uh, you were having sex. <laughs> no, we I mean, were having, no, no, no. You were having sex you, with me. Right. But I wasn't getting anything out of that. Yeah. Right. So that's gotta be a, even if she just didn't lie, you would start the conversation. Yeah. For ego alone, yeah. you would you would start the conversation. Um and I, I just think it was it was it was tough, but a lot of men and it's funny because a lot of men were laughing and stuff and women were on Twitter I'm talking about that women were like, Well, you shouldn't be laughing. Cause this is much more common. You most of you are DJ envies. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Most <laughs> men that have had any type of experience uh, before and are confident in the bedroom of like, I know what it is. A lot of them are not asking the question of what is it though? They're just right. like, I get it. I know what you like. I know. Yeah. And then you do, you do like nothing's more awkward for somebody to do something and you like, like you, they really like, yeah. And you're like, <laughs> but, but when we gonna get to the good part, right? <laughs> but, but when we gonna do the the thing that we that I want to do that this that, whole movie is set up, right? <laughs> oh, you're done. Okay, all right. So we're here, ah. and that's the thing about sex. It should be a conversation. It has to be. It has, good sex has to be a conversation. Well, the problem, the reason why the conversation usually is not happening in sex is that we still have an issue with the conversation of consent. Mm -hmm. So the conversation starts there and then it continues until the end. Mm -hmm. But half the time, people aren't even setting up the beginning of yeah. the conversation to be able to get to the middle. And I'm not saying that like people aren't consenting that aren't that are having these problems. It's just the initial conversation around sex is still awkward. It only heightens the awkwardness in the middle of the act yeah. of it. And then and then by the end, you didn't lie so much or deflect it so much. That That's it's why you to got to like, get in the film room. You got to go back. Let's watch this back. Mm. Oh, hey. <clears throat> All right. Let's stop it here. Right. Right. You were here. speaking in tongues here. <laughs> right. Was that actually because of something I was doing? Right. Or No. No. And then she's like, well, when you were speaking in tongues, though, it didn't feel good. Right. It was actually a little less, rough. Less hundred de also. <laughs> yeah. You know. Solid. It, it, it wasn't. It. He landed there. That was solid <laughs> tongues, Josh. You know, my, gra my grandpa's a pastor. <laughs> No, yeah, that's they, not no, why. That's no, not they, why Josh's tongue is solid. Josh has been practicing the yeah, tongue. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Are we still talking about Hande or something oh, else? Oh, no, Josh is red. I know because Josh, Josh, Josh is red. What are you talking about? What are we talking about? Mm. It's, sub, is subtext happening? Hot yes, a here. lot of subtext. Subtext is happening. Really subtext is happening. Here. Josh has been practicing his tongue. I don't know what you mean. I just grew For up in church. For solid gear. I'm just a church kid. <laughs> You know, that, that's how I know you're just a church kid. That's how I know. That's how I know. No, it's our favorite bathroom time conversation. That is the that's the we do a play by play. Yeah. In the bathroom right after the, the whole like, the clean up session. Clean up, clean up. Everybody. <laughs> Everywhere. Clean up, up, clean up. Everybody, Everybody do, do your the, shit. It'd be a lot like, so what made you do that? <laughs> Did you see it somewhere? But like, that, that's, that? I honestly think for a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. right? And not just, I want to get off. Uh -huh. For a healthy relationship where you really care about your partner's enjoyment of the act as well, mm -hmm. you got to be, oh, you can't have that much ego mm -hmm. to think that whatever you're doing is is killing it. Right. Right? Killing it is relative to the person receiving the killing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right. if, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah. Like you got to be like, because if you're all gonna be ego, then your ego is not gonna be open to hearing what she is saying or he's saying. And yeah. this is not. I'm just talking about this because this is the setup from DJ Envy and his wife. Yeah. But killing mm -hmm. it can be relative to the man as well. Like, oh, I love information. So did you like it? You see, I tried something. Yeah. How was, that? was it too much? <laughs> You see, I tried something. <laughs> I tried was something new. Yeah. Was it too much? I, I had a thought about it in my head. I thought it would turn out really well. Sometimes he'd be like, 
don't do that again. <laughs> there you go. And I'll be like, but that's how it. you learn. You go. got listen. Here's the thing. That's a different type of vulnerability too. But go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> GPS. For me, I love good instructions. Yeah. Good instructions. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. At, after the next light, turn left. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, in three hundred feet, turn right. If you mm-hmm. see the chevron, you've gone too far. Hey, listen, I want to. I want to help you mm-hmm. get where you where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Slow down. Hazard ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Red light camera. The more information, the better. Lower, higher, faster, shorter, stronger, yes. de- uh, deeper. Relative. Deeper is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Got an origami that thing. D- d- well, deeper is you, to go you deeper. yeah, because well sometimes there's only so much you have. <laughs> you so you like, can't. No, that's yeah. what I said. So you, you, got origami, you got an origami her. Oh yeah. To shorten the. Th- that's what I learned. Sometimes deeper from here, I I, <laughs> I want to give you more, but oh I don't have it. I was I was checking. I was checking, but I, I didn't have some. I just, remember, so what we can do? We, remember when we prayed together? <laughs> I just. <laughs> There's, there's certain articles that you can reach there uh, that you can read that say, hey, how to go to the back if you shorten don't have the that. passage. You got to no, shorten you it. Just, you gotta, skip, just skip a couple. You got to take the shortcut. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, baby, Yoda needs to be. You got to you got to shorten the shaft. I didn't like that. And oh, then, I, you know, but also sometimes there's nothing back there. But, you know, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> stuff. So all I'm saying is. You got to also know what kind of meat you have. If it hangs to the left, there's articles for a hook. Yeah. There's articles for everything. There's stuff for everything. But the, single the thing you thing. first gotta do is take your ego out of it. Mm. If you're being led by ego, then you then your ego is gonna say, I'm doing right because I'm doing what I think is, is right. This yeah. is what it's gonna be. This is what it's because well, it's it's the arrogance and the ego of if this feels good to me, surely mm-hmm. it must feel good to you. That's so why I go back to the shaft and if you did this. Why do you keep what? stroking off Can your you stop? Starbucks cup? It did you not just, ask for that. You could do this that, all night. Now you, now you know I can top you, so stop. Yeah, don't. Okay. You okay, Kevin? Right. <laughs> okay. So because uh, I'll be over here. Okay, like, I already but stopped. Then sometimes <laughs> when you're in there, you want to tip it up, right? So if you're like this, like tip hub, then, then you want you want it facing up, right? For leverage. Yeah, leverage. Because there's a spot in the inside. That's the spot that a lot of people don't pay. That's no up and under. That's yeah, that's, that's you, what I'm saying. Yeah, you got to like, it's like scratching. You see? You it's see you touch, the it, You touch yeah. the spirit bah, there. Bah, yeah. Bah. And it helps a lot of times when you're, it, ladies, let's stretch, right? Let's stretch. Let's get our legs where they need to be, you know? I already stopped. I had stopped. No, you there. didn't. It's you ran the light. <clears throat> yeah. You, ran you the look light. at actually how a lot of dildos are uh, shaped. It'll tell you what part you want to read. They look like Shamu breaching. Just yes, like. they do. They're not just like. They be like that. Some be like that. You, the, they be like, come here. Come here. Come here, girl. Even though dildos don't make no sense to me sometimes. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick break from the show to talk about today's episode sponsor. And that is Honey. Honey is an easy way to save money when you're shopping on your phone or on your computer. Honestly, I love online shopping, especially nowadays when most of the time I can't physically go to the store because it's going to take another hour or two that I don't have in the day. Um, So I look for convenience any way possible, whether that's something quick on my phone um, that I could order to have sent to the house, hopefully the same day. You never know. But uh, also what I don't like is the cost of all the added fees that come with that. But Honey makes it a lot easier to save all the pennies because they all add up, especially uh, when you do your taxes and you realize how much you spent. You'd be like, oh, I could have saved some pennies. Boom. Honey. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the Internet for promo codes and then applies the best one it finds directly to your cart. How easy is that? This is how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. That's it. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop right there. That's the best part. That's what I'd be like. I'd be pushing the button. i go like this. Show me the Honey. <laughs> right? Okay. Um. So, guys, I buy a lot of camera gear. Way more than I should have, but I really believe in investing in yourself. Um 
as much as possible that you're able to do obviously within your means don't don't go too crazy uh with your passions but also leap of faith go crazy um but with every one of those purchases i literally will look up or i used to look up said store promo codes this month this year and i would just be scrolling and potentially throwing viruses on my computer but that's that's all gone honey makes it so much easier you literally quite literally add the extension to whatever browser you're on you click the button and it just you see calculating goes bloop, 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 bloop. that's the that's the sound i feel like it makes but um then it'll throw the promo code in once it finds it and it could be any 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 dollar amount off you you never know what uh which one it's going to find which one's going to work honestly it's it's great so all my shopping stuff the my golf gear that i'll be buying it's honestly too easy for how much i've been able to use honey um especially since i feel like i shop more with it because i i find promo codes and i feel like i win even though i i still spend money but anyway like when i was looking for a new gaming controller one of the content creators that i follow i guess had a promo code for it that i had no idea about so i ended up using that promo code and it saved me like 15 dollars off the controller which justified my purchase right then and there it was great it was easy that was the best part um so this is what we need you guys to do honey just doesn't work on your desktop it works on your iphone too just activate it on safari on your phone and save on the go if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out and by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. I'd never recommend something I don't use, guys. That's right, because I love using Honey. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. That's K-R-E-W. Once again, that's joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. And while we're talking about saving things, let's save some time, huh? Let's save some time away from the, the traditional route of going to therapy. The traditional route of, oh, I have to set this up. I hope I can fit this in my schedule. Nope, something popped up. Got to cancel it. I can't get better. I can't talk about what's what's going on in my life. Um, but you guys need to prioritize that. I think it's very important to go to therapy, especially within your own means. And Talkspace makes a great opportunity to do it without leaving the house. Talkspace therapists are available to message you anytime because you shouldn't have to watch your thoughts pile up until your next appointment rolls around. I'd be forgetting stuff tomorrow let alone a whole week if i don't write it down and then oops sorry i forgot what we're supposed to be talking about i don't know how i'm gonna get better i think therapy is something that everybody should go to as well as has as well as have access to um and talkspace makes it easy because you could literally do it within the app on your phone or on your computer wherever you're comfortable with and i think that's ideal we all go through so much emotionally all the time sometimes we don't even realize it sometimes we have to say it out loud or in a text just to get it off our chest to be able to see, oh snap, this is a lot of stuff going on. Maybe I should talk to somebody professional about that. The professional is the key. So certified therapists are definitely a priority that you guys should be able to vent to and talk to um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And Talkspace makes that possible. Taking the first step towards getting help can be scary, but no matter where you are in your mental health journey, Talking to a therapist who's trained to help makes a huge difference. Talkspace takes some of the pressure off that first step. It's more flexible, convenient, and affordable way to get high quality care. Your mental health is too important to rely on Dr. Google. With 24-7 text, audio, and video messaging, Talkspace lets you talk to a licensed therapist without needing an appointment. Talkspace is private, secure, and most importantly, accessible. It's everything you love about therapy without the stuff that gets in the way. So this is what we need you guys to do. If thoughts and emotions are piling up, a fresh perspective can help you feel better. Guys, it's so important to be able to talk about what you're feeling, especially to somebody who does this professionally and who's unbiased. That's that's also very important. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use promo code CREW, that's K-R-E-W, during the sign up to get $100 off your first month. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code CREW. Now let's get back to the show. The well, why dildo, say, sex toys, all vibrators, all of them. No, I'm saying they don't make no sense because I don't, maybe I'm lazy. I don't want to do all that work. I don't want to do the work. I don't <laughs> do that work to myself. <laughs> that just sounds so stupid to me. To do the insertion work, I don't know how people do it. I'd be like, nah, tap me out. 
no, no, this is not what I want. So I, I, as embarrassing as I can tell that conversation would be for a lot of men, mm -hmm. it is the conversation that every person should be having with their sexual partner. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, because what's what's it all for then? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's it's it like all for? Scuba. Scuba. What, what was scuba? it all for? What was it all for? What was it all for? <laughs> so I think that actually, interestingly enough, I think masculinity and patriarchy is the first thing that messes up sex. No, yeah, absolutely. Because men, we are taught to go out and conquer and be selfish. We are not taught to ask questions and to serve. Mm -hmm. Amen. A good sexual partner isn't a conqueror. They're a servant. Right? What can I get you? Yeah. How was that? Yeah. How was the first bite? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> how did that feel? How did that? Mm -hmm. How are you now? Mm -hmm. Is this going well? Yeah. If you're just ramming the bush, that's not a good servant. <laughs> that's just a that's just a grab a lunch and and go. Which has its place. But your fine dining restaurants, you know what they are, what makes them fine dining restaurants? It's the service. Yeah, mm. they come to the table. Catering. They come and take a, that little scooper thing. I don't even know what it is. Where they like scrape off three breadcrumbs? Yeah, they visit your table often. Mm. And when you're a good server, I can give you a good tip. Bring you, you know after mm. the meal, a hot towel. Come on, you know I can give you a real good tip. Uh, yeah. Hot towel. <laughs> what? Yeah, because that's what you need. At a steakhouse. You know? mm -hmm. At a steakhouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you go to McDonald's, you order, they mm -hmm. bring the food, take it and go. And it, that has its place. But oh, you're, yeah, you're not sometimes expecting you just need right. the drive through Sometimes that's all you got time for. I'm going menu. to the drive through right after here <laughs> because I'm hungry. Okay? But I just want to grab some fries and some nugs, dip, yeah. dip, sip, sip. Mm -hmm. But when I'm on my anniversary... I want some fine dining. Go to Del Frisco's, you know. I want Del, Del Frisco's. We're in Delhi. You know what Del Frisco's, what them restaurants pride them on? They pride yourself on the experience. Amen. Listen, Amen. I ain't seen my husband for over 24 hours in four weeks. We're going to Ryan's Buffet. Wow. We're doing all you can eat. That's what the hell we're doing. He gets in at 518. <laughs> Not Kids, <laughs> go to bed. Shut. Don't Shut come up. in here. Shut your mouth. Put on Encanto. Turn it up. <laughs> on Encanto. I'm gonna put a cage in here. <laughs> Matter of fact, there's a TV in the garage now. You know there's what? bread and Bruno. water. Don't come out of don't. this room. Do don't. not knock on our door. Ever. I don't want to hear. I don't want to see you. <laughs> I don't want to see you. We're talking about Bruno in here. Yes. <laughs> One hundred percent. What a blessing six. of having a fifteen-year-old and a thirteen-year-old. Sucks to have a two-year-old. Yeah, Even oh, the seven-year-olds, they don't. They, our kids, don't come bother us rarely, if at all. They be like, "Are you guys home? <laughs> cool. cool. What are you Bye. doing in your room? There Could be anything. And it's also nice to have a big house." Kids are all there. You're on the other side of the house. Right, you're you in the West Wing. On. You're on the West Wing. Mm -hmm. In the quarters. When we first had our house, <laughs> they don't know what movie we were watching. Because <laughs> those walls was about as big as this. <laughs> there ain't even no insulation in this house. What movie is it? No, it was uh, <laughs> Your Baby Can Read. That was our, we had that much time. One Your Baby Can Read <laughs> session. We put little Marcus in his thing. Boo boo doo. If I heard that music, I knew what time it was. Okay, well, let me hurry up because I don't know how many words they did. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Why is my <laughs> Marcus said in Marcus in the Patreon? Welcome, Marcus. I didn't even know he was in here. This man He's said in Charlotte we, on his uh, layover. We about to be sore <laughs> AF in next the week. Front Marcus and the gonna back. be like, hey, Jesus. <sighs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, when Marcus is sore, that's when you know y'all don't miss each other. Jesus, Jesus. He said in the front, out the back. <laughs> out the back. That is what, that's what we, <laughs> that's what we back. call. I get frustrated. This is a little, we've talked about it on our podcast. I get frustrated <laughs> when he leaves the package so far. And I said, you leave it all the way in the back of the house. Oh, Lord. And then I'm worried about it all day long because I got to wait until it makes its way back out front. Do you? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. The package. I, I'm, I'm sorry. The delivered I don't, package. The, the, the delivered notification package at the, at the end of everything. 
the package has been delivered. And I'll be like, you try your best to get it at the all the way in the back of the house. And he'd be like, I'm going to leave he it at the garage, the, the detached the garage in the oh, back. Oh, boy, I can't. I mean, my context clues was off. <laughs> He's that goal line. He's like, I'm not going That's anywhere. You got twins. I mean, like, can we just leave it in the living room? The, the, the Marcus living is room. like, no, you know, Amazon got this new thing. <laughs> They'll open the garage. They'll put it in your house for Lord you. Jesus. Not only Marcus. Marcus is like, I'm gonna take it out and build it. I'm gonna take the box out. I'm gonna put it together. I want to make You're your never day. You're gonna get it out. It's Patreon, gonna be stuck in there. Patreon in the chat saying, bust the nut. That, that's, bust a, a that's why you got to pee after, y'all. <laughs> You got to pee. But that's what I'm saying. I would have to sit there all day to wait <laughs> to just be like, it's still. It's just. It'd be making me so mad. He don't care. Oh, man. Anyway, in other news. Yeah, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, so, Barney. No. The, <laughs> this was actually. Well, I actually wanted to go back to this Mike Tyson thing. Uh, actually, and since Marcus is flying, I'm curious. The federal mask mandate ended five days ago. In airports and stuff. Marcus and found out today. Within hours. All, actually, on some flights. Southwest well, right, American he flew Delta. out there with it still under. Yes, and today oh, wow. he flew back. And uh, Southwest American Delta, one more airline. United? Maybe it was United. Within the hours. Like, in the air. In the air. Were taking their masks there are off. videos of, of flight attendants being like, hey, they just struck this down. You can now take your mask off. I'm going to I'm gonna say my honest opinion because I've flown a lot and I've flown with my mask on. I don't like to wear my mask for long flights. Mm -hmm. I don't like, to, I don't, wouldn't say that anybody likes to wear the right. mask. Nobody's right. Nobody's like, yeah. It is irritating, especially oh, the longer you fly. We went to Egypt, it's 10, 11, 12 hours. It's a long time to wear a mask. Last year, we were just wearing masks multiple times a week for yes. multiple hours. Yes. Long flights at least, straight. However... I'd be wanting to take it off on flights. The chance of me taking it off now. Slim to none. I, now that everybody's just off, nope. I, somehow I will find the courage <laughs> to keep it on because I feel like the, the raw air don't feel, don't hit the same. Oh, yeah. No. no. I want to take recycled? my mask off for a second with job masks on. And people fly <laughs> sick all the time. Oh, Dog. absolutely. <laughs> Before COVID. Before COVID. People yeah. got it. I remember there was a video that went viral. Uh, the girl had her phone in between the cracks of the seat and she was texting and the other girl was recording her because yeah. she was coughing and yeah. she was like, it's crazy because I'm on the plane with COVID right now. And the girl like screenshot that. So that's how I assume everybody. Oh, absolutely. Is. And the thing is, like I suffer from allergies and my allergies right now are going crazy. So I'm sneezing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows where that's allergy sneeze right. or COVID -y sneeze. Yeah. My nose runs when my allergies are acting up. I water my eyes, cough, all that type of stuff can be allergy related. But now I'm assuming that it's all COVID. So I think it's really interesting that uh, I always felt like when the mask mandate was lifted from the planes, mm -hmm. it would feel like the pandemic was over. Yeah. Somehow in my mind, I felt like that would have been like the last oh, no. thing. No. Cases are going up. I think Bro, Philly China, just China has China have locked you seen down. these videos of China. Yeah, it's terrifying. They locked back down. Philly put back the mask mandate, and this is the time where they're like, "All right, strike it down." LA is reversing yeah. the. They're bringing the like in. I think airports, not on planes. But yeah, I in airports, you got to wear masks. You again. still got to wear it inside, but not on the plane, which. The plane is where you have the recycled air. So, I right. mean, yeah. it's kind of counterproductive to be like, here where there's open air that right. goes out in the world, you got to wear the mask. When you get into the cabin where the breath from 13A is brought to you by the vents, <laughs> right. this is where you'll be. This <laughs> is where you'll be straight. I really think they're, um, the world is done <laughs> with caring. The governments are done with caring, at yeah. least the U.S. government. And they're just like, whoever going to die, going to die. That, let's just have let's just go ahead let that happen i i 1000 percent agree mm -hmm. i uh and i honestly never thought it would be it was never going to happen to where everybody felt like it's the time to happen because some people are never going to not wear a mask on a plane for the rest of their life ever yeah never never it would actually be unlikely that right. everybody would do it but i totally agree i think the government was like we got the vaccine we got the second dose we got the booster we got enough tests where everybody can have it we got lower, um, I mean, we've got uh, hospitals are not inundated, or maybe they are. They are. Enough. 
I feel like the government and cities are just like, we not going to fight y'all no more. Mm -hmm. We also don't care. Yeah. That's really what it, it does not matter. I think the only reason the government ever cared is because it wasn't because people were, I mean, people were dying, but it was because it will, uh, the main thing about the vaccine was it will overrun the health department. Mm -hmm. Too many sick people at one time, they can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. hospitals are for like, like not that many sick people that the numbers that COVID was sending in. Mm -hmm. And then you have people with just problems unrelated to COVID. And then you right. have elective surgeries. That was the big fear. Now the government's like people die every day. B. Yeah. I really <laughs> like, think they're like, if we could just get to the survival of the fittest as quickly as possible, then we can kind of move on because all the other things that they tried, we had enough people bucking it yes. that yeah. it wasn't going to work. When we did uh, shelter in place, people were like, but I got, I want to party. Yes. I want to party with my friends. Yes. So we're just going to have a quick little super spreader event. It's fine. Yes. Then they were like vaccine. People were like, you, you did it too quick. I'm not taking it. You're not going to yes. sticky icky my children. Right. All right. Okay. Mass. Everybody wear a mask. Constitutional rights. Freedom of speech. Can't speak with a mask on. So when all the uh, life preservers have been thrown out yeah. and we begin to swat those away, eventually they're like, well, just jump in the ocean and die, please. Those of you and all can swim. Let's Wait. add to this. Businesses want people to come back to work. Of course. And, uh, fast food services, all that. But also, uh, remember Joe Biden a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, was like, come back in the office. Yeah. Because they are paying the lease on of empty course. buildings. Yeah. So sick or not, people been sick all the time. So we got sick leave. Yeah. I'm in this, for example, this lease, five years. Okay. Uh, Kevin State Studios lease, five, five years. years. Yeah. Companies are like, if I have, the government is also afraid if these people with leases just stop paying them, mm -hmm. then they're going to have a whole nother problem. They're going to have to do a whole mm -hmm. bailout for the whole real estate industry. Well, they, and they are, listen, they're, they're going to, the government, if they ain't show nothing else, they bailed out the people with the most money first. Absolutely. The airline industry got bailed out, bailed out the first Thursday of COVID. They said Delta $3 billion. Hey, they we didn't even know much about it yet. <laughs> right. And they already got the bailout? They were like, here you go. Here's a, here, let me, here's a 20. You hold on to this while we figure out what these fools down here are doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I definitely, um, I'm waiting. The big. This is when I'm going to know. All right, it just is what it is. Once they stop testing in Hollywood, yeah. that's when. And I'm waiting for that to happen because even where we were shooting the pilot, we didn't test as much as I'm used to testing out here. I know. I'm used to testing every single day. I think I might have one day off, but I'm usually doing a PCR and then a rapid or just a rapid, whatever it is. Yes. Where I was at, tested on Monday and Friday. I tested my show that we're shooting now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have shot for five days. I have tested five times. Yeah. I tested on Saturday prior for Monday, Monday for Wednesday, Tuesday for Thursday, Wednesday for Friday, and then Friday for Monday again. Yeah. And then Monday, I will also test. You will test again? again. All over. For All the next, over again. For the next three weeks. For the next three That's weeks. I've taken be. a COVID test every other calendar day, and I will continue every other calendar day for the next four weeks. Hollywood don't want to pay that money. No. Well, and that's the reason why the only way Hollywood can't, this is the reason why I think it's getting ready to happen in Hollywood where all this is going to go away because LA is open. It was easier to contain your actors and feel like they can come to set safe mm -hmm. because if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is wearing your mask when you're in public and in indoor spaces and not like subjecting yourself to a bunch of people, the likelihood that you're going to get COVID should be a lot less. Yeah. Now that everything is open and the people around you are not required to wear a mask. So whether you're in the long line to go to the grocery store uh, or in the grocery store, whether you're at the movie theater, there is a greater chance you can catch COVID, which means there's a greater chance that one of your set or, um, Crew. crew will catch COVID. And if it is a principal actor, yep. everything has to come to a halt or you got to rechange the shooting schedule, which is hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of dollars. So once that happens too many times, they're going to be like, wait a minute, we're losing too much money. Mm -hmm. Stop testing these people. Yes. And that's the other thing. It's going to go back to like people were sick before. We just didn't know because we weren't testing them. 
They came to work. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estamos tomando un descanso del este program. Oh, sorry, guys. I've, I've been taking Babel too much, I guess. Um, Hey, guys, we're taking a quick break from the show uh, to talk about today's sponsor, Babel. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. Um, guys, I took Spanish in high school, but I feel like I learned pretty much what I grew up hearing um, between my grandparents and my and my dad, uh, which which wasn't much. Um, I, I wish I'd, I learned more. And it was it was tough to focus. You know, everybody was just messing around in that class. I felt like nothing got effectively done, unfortunately. But now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Guys, I want to continue learning more Spanish so I could talk to my dad in Spanish. I feel like I can get more jokes off to him in Spanish, even though he's bilingual fluent. Um, I just want to be able to learn my native tongue a little bit better. You know, it, uh, it, it never hurts. And Babbel's making it super easy to do that on my own time. Babbel's 15 minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel's lessons were created by over a hundred language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. It's all about that acento, guys. I'm telling you. There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to video lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash SK. That's babbel.com slash SK for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel language for life. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. And also with the vaccine, people taking the vaccine, you, uh, you're a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times your COVID experience is not, is more mild mm -hmm. when you have the vaccine, the vaccine. Uh -huh. So you might be only down bad, like two days. Mm -hmm. Hollywood can live with that because now what would be more, it's more expensive to test and have a whole bunch of people negative. Uh, then before it was like, like you were saying, if you get positive, it's a huge hassle. Yeah. But if you're not testing at all, you don't know, you don't I know easily worked when I had COVID over Christmas because my only symptom was I wasn't hungry. Right. That ain't, that ain't ruined nobody's day. It's I'm actually looking greater. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Skin popping, extra weight that came off for no reason. That's, yeah. that's not something that's going to interrupt the work day. What's going to interrupt the work day is that I've test positive. And so now I got to sit out. And even I'm, though you don't feel bad, even though I don't, even though I'm not sneezing, even though I'm not coughing, even though I don't have any uh, body aches, I'm just not interested in craft services today. That right. does not prevent me from saying my lines, from being right. the actress that you hired for me to be. And so that's why I think I, I don't give it. I, I think by the fall, unless everything falls apart, they're going to be like, stop this testing. Just stop. I agree. I think uh, the last time I had it over, over uh, the Christmas break, I might have had had that happen in 2016. Mm -hmm. I might have got out. If, if it was a job I hated, I would have called out sick. If it was something I love, like all deaf and we were shooting, I would have went to work. Yeah. Because we've been shooting. I'd be like, bro, I just would have, you know, I mean, if it was something I was excited about doing. Yeah. I'd probably be like, I ain't, I'm not even that sick. Yeah. I'm, it, it felt no different than having allergies. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like, it, it was funny because it was something that I thought I wanted until it happened. Because I, I was like, oh, when the masks come up on the planes, everything will be okay. I, I, think, mm -hmm. I read the article. It, it's not okay. It's not. <laughs> it really is not. It's not okay. And I, when I was when me and Denora were talking about it, she was like, why are they taking away masks now? This is crazy. This is before the plane. It was something else they took masks away from. She was like, don't they understand, like, the effects of long COVID? And I was like, girl, people died. They didn't care about that. They didn't care about people dying. <laughs> In wreck, like the September 11th numbers, COVID blew past that. Yeah. It was like those, at one point, it was like the amount of people that died on September 11th were dying daily. Yeah. People didn't care. Death is the worst. Right. I said Long they COVID don't... isn't worse than death. Brain fog? They don't <laughs> care about brain fog. Your <laughs> grandmother's dead. They didn't care about that. So they don't care that you don't remember where you parked your car. <laughs> 
They don't care. They don't. Talk about brain fog. We talking about brain unplugged, <laughs> brain gone, cease of life. Stop. They don't they care. Don't. They don't. And people are like, there's there are immunocompromised people, disabled people. The government doesn't care about none of that. They really. They don't care about healthy, disabled, immunocompromised. It is hard for Americans because we are taught to be selfish. Mm-hmm. In Japan and stuff, they care. They wear masks when they feel sick prior to COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I have uh, I I have apprehension about how we'll get out of this. And, you know, I'm so grateful my children have never caught COVID uh, because I probably would be like on pins and needles. Like, how's yeah. everybody going to respond? Neither has my mother. But um, I really do think that it's just going to end up being it's not just that I think it that's what it is. It's just going to be the survival of the fittest. Hopefully your body is capable of taking on it if you catch it. But that's America. America's whole thing is survival of the fittest. Yeah. Like that's the whole thing. America's whole thing is sucks to be you. Mm-hmm. It sucks to be. You know what I heard? Interesting. There's a you know on Twitter. This is on. Well, you might not know because you'll be on Twitter. But I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, the saying that wealth is bad, black wealth isn't gonna save you. Black capitalism is bad, right? That's the idea. This guy I follow, an activist out of Portland, said black wealth isn't our black capitalism isn't capitalism. It's redistribution. Mm -hmm. Right. He said black people acquiring wealth in a system designed to block them from it. It isn't the same wealth as white people obtaining it in a system built for them to succeed. It's redistribution. And I was like, huh, I never thought about it like that because mm -hmm. on Twitter, they'll make you feel bad for anything. anything, but doing well is like eat the billionaires, all this type of stuff. Uh, and I never thought about because we live our life as black people, we live in a world designed to make it harder for us. In some ways, we don't even realize how many different ways it is harder for us because it's always been that way. Yeah, it's our normal. It's our neutral. It's Yeah, it's like how much we have to do to just be in the game mm -hmm. is so much harder. Mm -hmm. I was reading this article the other day about, they were talking about how affirmative, I mean, uh, diversity in Harvard. And they were talking about how most of the people in Harvard are recruited are either athletes uh, children of people who graduated from Harvard, uh, or they're on the Dean's preferred list, which is basically people whose family donates to, a, uh, donates a lot to Harvard before they're considering SATs, ACTs, they're considering that stuff. Black people don't be having people in college like that right. to have, like you went to college. I went to college. Neither of us went to Harvard. <laughs> Surely did. Right. So our kids best chance if it went like if it were equal is your kids go to UK and mine go to UW, mm -hmm. right? But even if we didn't have that, if you had a lot of money and didn't go to UW, if you say you're donating $25 million to Harvard, your kids are getting into Harvard. Right. Oh, they better. <laughs> There's not guarantee $2 million. Probably you donate ahead of time and say, I got four kids. All four of them are going. Mm -hmm. People outside of black people have had that leg up for a long time. For a very long time. So, it's, and then as soon as you open the door for affirmative action to help black people, you know who got helped the most? White, White women. women. Mm -hmm. But the people who bore the brunt of affirmative action were black people. Oh. And we didn't even get helped the most. Uh, no. Welfare by population number and ratio by and large helps white people more than anybody else. Yes. But who gets blamed for welfare babies and project babies and welfare people stuck on it? Black people. These folk. It don't even be for us mm -hmm. as much as it be for you. By not, and I'm not saying sheer numbers by sheer numbers, but also by equal by to the ratio. numbers of, of population. If we take up 13%, we are not taking up 13% of those that are on. And how we get welfare. blamed. Black people get arrested more. I mean, black people are in prison more. They also get arrested 10 times more. Frist more. I thought about this too. When I lived in Calabasas, right? I didn't see a police car. Never, ever, mm -hmm. oh, ever. Yeah. People, you know, they're doing coke and yeah. all them things in them hills. And uh, when I lived in Reseda, I might have not saw a police car from noon to three. <laughs> them people, we get arrested. People was getting arrested. Oh, well, it's quieter Helicopter. Too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not Cattle that we're- birds were everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Just yesterday, 
I was just walking back uh, to my car. One just flying low, not doing anything. Right. Just like a, right. like a cop car just driving through the streets. This yes. one just flying over the air 800 feet in the air. That's what the first thing my kids noticed. They're like, there's no helicopters over here. Yeah. Because you're not going to bother the people in Calabasas. Right. Yeah. They'll complain. Yeah. So if we if we look out and make you basically be illegal, you're going to get arrested more and tried more and therefore imprisoned more in a system that's designed to do that exact thing. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know how we got to this, but it's like. Yeah, this let me say uh we didn't talk about it this podcast we talked about it on the bonus uh this is why you know there's so many kudos to people like tyler perry to people like you when we think of <laughs> when we think of like success uh in any industry but i'll talk about the industry that i know the most about you can look at abc cbs Disney, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Netflix, all of these folk, all of these networks that are businesses that are built on the back of white wealth and multiple white people coming together with their money to create yes. these corporations. But when you look at a Tyler Perry Studios, not to say that he might not have had some financial backing, majority of the risk mm-hmm. in the reputation of this network is built on the back of his work. Same yep. thing with Kevin on Stage Studios. The majority of the uh, the notoriety, the respect that people have for the app was built on your back. This is not to say that Tyler Perry doesn't now have people that are helping him run the ship, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. you have mm-hmm. people that are helping to run the ship. But the seeds that the seeds that caused this to grow were from you all tilling, from you all working mm-hmm. the I'm not I'm not trying to make this into a slave thing. This is farming. Uh till, <laughs> I was like, ooh, it's people gonna think I'm talking about slavery, but tilling the ground, tilling the garden to make it happen. And but when you think of the titans that you're up against, that is not how they came into it. No. So that is like it's is not even again, it's not comparing apples to oranges. That's the game. It's, Get in. Make a lot of money. Make it hard for people to do what you did. Right. That's how America was. Di- yeah. Disney was the Disney's the best example. We talk about this in the bonus as well. Mm-hmm. Disney made all their money off of public domain works from other people. Mm-hmm. Snow White and the Seven Drawers. Yeah. Um, Cinderella. All those things were somebody else's work. Yeah. Public domain. Disney just animated them, made the money, and then. Somebody else should have been able to do the same thing seven years later. But Disney was like, what about 15 years? And Mm -hmm. before 15 years came up, what about 25? By the time they were done, them things were 100 years old. Yeah. So now, because Star Wars was just coming up on it would have been like 25 years where you could have done it. Yeah. And and Disney ain't never going to let that go. No. Right? So now the way Walt Disney built his thing, I can then now not do that same thing. Absolutely. Because their company did that to make it harder for me. Right, so it's like how white people build their wealth, owning people. Now we got enough money. You nobody don't nobody own nobody else. Literally, that's a freaking such a great <laughs> don't nobody. Point. No America's free labor. wealth was built off of free labor. Yeah, stolen people, yeah. And free labor, and you had the land, stolen that's, people, free labor. Now you got the land. Mm-hmm. You done already got the stuff. That's why I don't care about those hedge funds. Hedge funds, all that money, old money. Right. And then now that we've done all we could, we and then so when they finally can't own people, the people you just owned Mm -hmm. don't have no money. So what do you get them to do? Come back and work for pennies on the dollar (laughs) on the thing that you used to do for free. And you don't have a place. And now I'm actually (laughs) and now I don't even have to feed you. So, well, guess what? It's actually cheaper for me now. Mm -hmm. That would be real reparations if we were like, flip it. You working for me for free. (laughs) For 400 years. For 400, flip it. And then we we square. We square. Flip it. (laughs) And then we even. Don't give me no land in a mule. Give me you, your kids, your old crusty mama. All of y'all, come on. And I can have sex with your wife and create more of you. That will then work for me. Yes. Yes. And they won't work. Let's start this factory. Then we square. And it would still take hundreds of years to even undo that. Uh huh. And I'd be like, I ain't even going to beat y'all. Just do it. You already know how to do. You ain't got to train me. Just do it and speak something else. Don't speak what you know. <laughs> speak something else. I'm going to give you something else to talk talk with so you can be confused and whatnot. It's mm. a wonder we got anything at all, Angel. Listen, that's why I'm saying I... People, people. Uh, who don't recognize um, when any minority 
especially those that were enslaved in this country, have any type of success that did not require them to sell out an entire race of people, (laughs) (laughs) that it is a lot more. You getting to an app actually having content, the amount of work you had to do is an ABC. It is a CBS. The amount of actual work because nobody else had to work that hard to make this happen. And they, we have forces going against us. That's why it's crazy to me that Kevin Jose Studio is still going. Quibi gone, CNN Plus gone, mm-hmm. with way more Head Start real estate resources, and they couldn't make it. And you know we we. <laughs> oh, and big up to Oprah. I be always leaving her out of the conversation. Her too. Like yeah. I know people don't be liking her because she be saying stuff about black men. That be true. People don't want to believe it. Um. However, though, comma. Sorry to cut you off, okay. Kevin. She was like the first to do it. Yes. People be forgetting that. Like, listen, she it it, it she was the first to do it. She yes. made these white folk all happy and they gave her all the money. And she was like And then she t- she owned it though. She owned it. The it's best thing ever that she did. She wouldn't be a billionaire without that. Um Absolutely dang, I'm about not. To play a clip and I lost it. And she said, Tyler, come on over here and help me. And Tyler did. Tyler did. Mm. And Kev did too. Shoot. And I'm sharing the wealth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Amen, amen. It's my birthday this Sunday. What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing, man? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know, okay? Well, what you want to do? Pay for this show. We want to talk golf? We can do a car wash, raise money for the <laughs> Raise money for the show. Buy a ticket to keep your distance comedy if you want to give me a birthday gift. Do it at the church. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or tip me on my tip hub. Mm-hmm. In my link in my bios. Still, I, I still love y'all. Used to that that name is terrible. Tip Hub? Tip it's Hub is horrible. terrible. It's branding. a hub of tips. Yes. Mm-hmm. A long it's shirt. like a whole bunch of dicks. It's just 50 together shades. There's 50 shades of tips in there. In a hub. Just a bunch of them, just all in there. Hey, guys. Welcome to right. the hub. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <sighs> all right. My birthday, May 1st. I'll be 39 years old. Ooh. Can't believe you ain't 40 yet. Nigga, you've been here for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> you already got the early for PM? some reason i thought this was my 40th birthday you got the plan maybe i'm not doing this <laughs> for real i'm not doing nothing big because now when i turn 40 me and melissa turn 40 both next year and we have oh no no that's, that's 24 that's 41 i'm doing something for my 40th though Lucky we're doing you. something for 39 COVID took away my 40th yeah, what's your 40 plus two this year i know but what we do for your birthday i kind of want essence Change to something. invite me i want essence fest to invite me so i'm very like I'm very. That ain't like, a birthday gift. They haven't announced work. anything yet, have they? No, 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 that would be a gift to me. It would. To get to be invited to Essence Fest to to be that chick angel, Angel Lakita Moore. On the strength. Yes, that would be. I would act a god dang on donkey. So that's what's made me hesitant to plan anything because I'm like. China What's your Manifest birthday it? is? That we can. Um, I'm about to say it is. It is right up in there. Yeah, that's I'm trying to manifest it. So if my show get picked up, picked up, I'm talking to the PR person and being like, "Listen, I know this show got a lot of white people in it, but let's get the black folk watching it. Send me the essence. Send me the essence. That's what I'm trying to do. There you go. I love you guys. God bless you. We'll Ooh, see you uh, next time. Next God, Saturday. Next Saturday. Bye. 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 Here's another bang of fire. Here's another one. Here's another bang of fire. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another bang of fire. Here's another bang of fire. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.